This is Eric Hayden. I'm the Warning Coordination Meteorologist for the office in Newport Moorhead City across Eastern North Carolina. This is our quick version of our winter sky warrant class. Uh, this is just really hits the basics on what we want you to report to us in terms of snow and ice. If this isn't long enough for you, not in depth enough, if you want to learn more about nor'easters, uh, why we have sleet versus snow, I encourage you to check out our YouTube channel and view the full version. That's about 50 minutes in length. This this is much, much shorter. Really want to emphasize why we need spotters and why we want folks to call in and uh, make reports to us. The bottom line is you let us know what's happening out in the community. We have Doppler radar, a lot of technology. It gives us a very good idea for what is happening, but some of that technology has limitations and you really provide us with ground truth of what is actually happening at the ground might be snowing, but is it sticking to your uh, roadways, your driveway, or just on the grass? Is it icy only on sidewalks or uh, on the local uh, area roads? So that's where you really can emphasize what's happening where you live. For reporting winter weather, we're most concerned with newly fallen snow. We're going to briefly go over where you should measure snow, how to best measure it, and when we want you to call in. We'll talk about some best measurement practices and also some other observations uh, such as ice. First thing you need to do is select a good location. That starts now as you view this video. Not all spots will be ideal. Perhaps you live in an urban area. Uh, perhaps you live in a rural area that has drifting, a lot of wind. I'm going to show you some pictures of what is an ideal location. You just want to get as close to that as possible. Not all sites are going to be perfect, and you do want to try to minimize drifting. So this is a gorgeous picture. Again, minimizing drifting. Notice the trees uh, surrounding the location, so we're not talking a really windy spot. But we're also talking a nice open spot, so you're not measuring by a tall object such as a tree. So that would be ideal. It's not a drifting spot, and you're not real t uh, next to uh, tall objects. Tall objects make a huge difference. This gentleman uh, measuring snow under a tree, this is a typical suburban lot. You might say, what's wrong with that? There, there's snow there, and uh, he measures about three inches of snow. But as he steps just a few uh, feet into the yard, again, a typical suburban lot, uh, you're not well away from trees, but you have more open areas. Uh, here he's measuring six and a half inches of snow. So do not measure under a tree or next to tall objects. What can you use to measure? Just a ruler is more than fine. If you've got a measuring tape, if you get a lot of snow, a yardstick would suffice. And we want you to be as accurate as possible, and what I mean by that, as specific as possible. If you can measure to the nearest tenth of an inch, that would be great. I know a lot of rulers may not have that, so you might just have to round up. Uh, so a, a three and a quarter inches would be 3.3. .3. The bottom line with that is don't get too picky. We just don't want whole numbers all the time. It always, you know, doesn't always snow one, two, three inches. Sometimes it's three and a half, uh, three and a quarter, that type of thing. Uh, we're just asking for precision. Speaking about precision, we like you to take an average of the snowfall. So on this example, on the far left, don't measure in a drift. So don't you know, measure at the end of your driveway where the plow uh, plows the snow into your yard. Uh, if you see spots that are obviously higher because of wind, don't measure there. Take a couple me measurements. You don't need long division, but just, just a couple measurements to get a good average, uh, and that's what we're looking for. Now, what can you measure on? On the grass is fine. Uh, deck would be a little bit better because you have a nice hard surface, an absolute zero, but unfortunately, you know, most decks are close to your house, and we want you to get away from that. So a snowboard would actually be best, and all that is is really a hard surface that you can put exactly where the best location is in your yard and that would give you a zero in terms of when you're putting uh, the ruler down into it. You can make this uh, by using a, a piece of plywood uh, roughly two feet by two feet and paint it white. Uh, and it's a good idea to mark the location uh, here because once you get more than an inch or two of snow, a whiteboard in a yard is going to be hard to see. So again, a snowboard is a nice hard surface and you can put it exactly um, the, in the best location in your yard. Now, how often should you measure? 
We want at least once at the end of the storm. That's the most important, what actually fell. And you want to measure as closely to the end as possible. If we get a real big storm in your home anyway, we encourage you to measure more often. An example would be uh, maybe halfway through the event, you give us a call and say, hey, I'm up to six and a half inches of snow. It's still snowing, but I wanted to let you know about it. And then you call it at the end to give us a final tally. It's important because of our rotating shifts here in the weather service, uh, you may talk to different people. So just let us know, hey, this is a running total. I'll call you with the final number at the end. So at the very least measure uh, at the end of the event, uh, if you wanna measure halfway through, that's fine as well. This is a nice graphic uh, to really emphasize. We want you to measure as close to the end of the snow as possible. And this is what I mean. On this fi fictitious event, uh, Monday morning it starts snowing at 7 o'clock. Um, or it starts snowing, excuse me, at 9 o'clock. The snow begins, and by 1 o'clock we have 2.4 inches of snow. We want you to be as close to 1 o'clock in this scenario as possible because uh, the sun may come out, the snow may melt or settle, and by the next morning you might be half of what you had the day before. So again, trying to measure as close to the end of the event as possible helps us out because especially in eastern North Carolina, uh, sometimes we'll have snow and a half day later it's completely gone. So that's the, the point of that slide to emphasize. So in summary, you want to find a nice level place uh, like a snowboard would be good. Slide the sticker ruler uh, into the grass or toward your snowboard. Uh, take an average and we're most concerned uh, with the newly fallen snow. Again, that's the storm total uh, to the nearest tenth of an inch. When should you call us? Since we don't see snow a lot, anytime it snows, we want to hear from you. So even if it's just a snow shower, give us a call, let us know what's happening. And again, if you are going to measure an amount, uh, do it uh, toward the end of the event. Um, we also want ice amounts. Um, with this, we want you to, to stay safe, so it might not be safe to walk outside. You can see in the picture on the bottom right of the screen, uh, ice accumulating on a branch. You could put a ruler up to that to get the thickness, but with ice it's more about what is it sticking to and how hazardous is it outside uh, versus the amount itself. So how do you let us know? The 800 number we provide our spotters is the best way to do that. Um, and the reason for that is we can ask you questions. If we have any questions about the observation, we can uh, ask you that. And this is a number that rings into our office that we answer 24-7. Uh, it's 800-889-6889. Again, it's 800-889-6889. And we want you to say who you are, that you're a trained Skyborne spotter, where you live, uh, your observation and the time. That's very, very important uh, to have that specific information. This number is not for forecast. It's not to ask us what we think is going to happen. This is only for spotter reports. When you call this number, we are going to be expecting uh, um, some type of observation from you. You can also email us. Uh, that's wxobs.com mhx at noaa.gov. Uh, with the email, it's not as preferred as the phone number, but you can maybe send us a picture, show us what's going on. Again, identify who you are, what you're seeing, you know, where you are, and the time. And the time's important because perhaps you measured first thing in the morning and then you headed into work. We need to know that because it might be completely gone by afternoon. We might be scratching our head if you call in at 5 and there's no snow anymore. Uh, so just let us know when you actually made that observation. You can send us uh, information on our social media channels, Twitter or Facebook, and again, indicate who you are. Same procedures, and we do prefer the 800 number, but we understand with the mobile devices now, uh, sometimes it's just easier to send it in via social media. If you go to our uh, website, weather.gov, or mobile.weather.gov. Really want to encourage folks to check out the mobile version. It's mobile.weather.gov. On that mobile platform, you can uh, do tweet a weather report, WX report. And when you do that, you can see here, it puts in the hashtags for our office. Uh, in this case, I just put rain has ended as a test. But uh, if you go to mobile.weather.gov, uh, you can send us a report 
uh, via Twitter. Just to summarize, the 800 number is preferred. Email and social media, you can do it that way, and it would be good to send us a picture, but again, 800 number is preferred. Uh, Coco Ross, we really didn't get into too much with this uh, quick version, but check out the full version on YouTube for more, and we'll talk more about amateur radio there. If you have any questions, send me an email. This is something new we're doing here in Moorhead City with YouTube videos. Please send me any comments and feedback. I would appreciate it.